So today we're going to be reading Drawing from Memory by Alan Say. It is an autobiography about Alan. Um, he is a well-known artist that works, that is working today, that has received many awards. And basically the book's about him overcoming the challenges he did to get to where he is today. I was born in 1937 by the seashore of Yokohama, Japan. Our house stood near a fishing village. My playmates were the children of fishermen. My mother constantly worried that I might drown in the sea. She tried to keep me at home. She taught me to read before I started school and that made me very popular among the neighborhood kids. I could read comic books to them. I was like a little Kambibushi man, a traveling storyteller with picture cards. My mother, my mother's ploy worked. Comic books kept me at home. I read them for hours and started and stared at the pictures. I decided to become a cartoonist when I grew up. So I drew. I drew what I saw and what I imagined and I copied from comic books. When I was drawing, I was happy. I didn't need toys of friends or parents. My parents were not pleased, especially father, who said, I expect you to be a respectable citizen, not an artist, and that means you'll have to earn a living. Artists are lazy and scrappy people. They are not respectable. Every day, father went to Tokyo to earn a living. I drew while he was away and hid my drawings when I came home. When then, then a war began in 1941, when bombs started to fall on our city, mother took us and fled to a village named Tabus between Hiroshima and Iwankunu. My father stayed behind. We never went home again. My sister was two at the time and doesn't, and doesn't remember it. So this picture up here is captioned, Tokyo in the late 1930s, around the time I was born. And this one... The last picture of me and my sister, Sane, in Yokohama. So the illustrations and pictures are really important in the story. They show, they carry the story along in, yeah. In uh, the country, we stayed with mother's uncle, the, the old man of the house of Murawaki, who lived alone. He was mean and stringy and own farmlands and mountains. For a whole year, Sani and I, and even mother, tried to hide from him in his big house. One day I would write a story about him in the language of the people who were bombing us. Once under the cherry blossom the tree, once under the cherry blossom tree would be its title. When the war ended four years later, everything was broken. I was four when the war began in 1941. I am with my babysitter. The American forces occupied Japan on my eighth birthday in August, August 28, 1945. Our house in Yugohama had been destroyed. Father went to the South Island of Kaishuyu and found work in the city of Sesibo. We were reunited there. I sent for the local grammar school. I was sent to the local grammar school and put in Miss Mortia's class. It was first grade. I was in first grade. Miss Mortia said that my ability to draw was a wonderful talent. No one had told me that before. She entered one of my drawings in the contest and it won first place. Years later, I drew Miss Morta's from memory. That's what it says. And then I'm in the middle of the top row. He's somewhere up there. Two American soldiers visited our school on the first spring sports day after the war. One of them did all this, all sorts of tricks on the principal's bicycle. This is a sketch of the Marine who did the trick riding. So that's what you drew right there. Um, Japan and America were at peace now, but 
the marriage of our parents was broken. Father took me and my sister and I left me and my sister left mother. Soon we had a stepmother. She was a kind woman, but we missed our mother. Mother returned to Yokohama and got a job in an apartment. I was 11 when she came to claim us. She took Sani with her to Yokohama and sent me to stay with her mother in Tokyo. I was going into the sixth grade, time to prepare for middle school, and all the good schools were in Tokyo. So this one is a sports day scene at school that I had drawn from memory. Uh, Sani and me in Sab Sabusco a year before my mother came for us. I'm 10 and my sister is six. So a lot of the captions for the drawing say drawn from memory. And that's what the story is called because he's thinking about his past and stuff. Um, my grandmother had lived alone until I came and I made her unhappy. Drawing again, she said, she would say, you'll never amount to anything. She sounded just like my father who believed artists were unrespectable. One day, grandmother said, I have spoken with your mother. If you study hard and get accepted to Aoyama Middle School, we will let you live alone. What do you mean, grandmother? I asked. We will rent an apartment for you where you can be a serious student. Are you joking? I'm only 12 years old. I do not just she said um she said i started at grandmother i stared at grandmother she wasn't smiling but she wasn't scolding either so imagine being 12 and living by yourself that's basically how old you guys are now um Aniyama was a well-known private school almost impossible to get into but an apartment of my own i would quit drawing and studied for the rest of the time I discovered that I had a good memory. I memorized names and dates, numbers and formulas, then took the amioma entrance examination. On the day the school announced the exam, exam results, grandmother stayed at home, so I went to find out by myself. After school, the names of the students who had been accepted were posted on a big bulletin board. And there it was, my name leaping out at me. It seemed like the most beautiful name in the world. I called mother at her office in Yokohama. She was happy and relieved. I can relax and I can relax until I go to college, she said. She was already talking about my old age. <laughs> Grandmother said when I told her she was trying very hard not to smile. Next, I told my sixth grade teacher who helped me so much to prepare for the examination. You make me, you make me proud to be a teacher, he, he exclaimed. And then my sis, my sixth grade teacher and me, I'm sorry I don't, sorry to say I don't remember his name. I hope his relatives will recognize him. Grandmother hired a man to move my things out of her house as I left. She said, be there, be sure to eat properly. I was dazed with happiness as I marched into the place of my own. It was less than 30 minutes away from my grandmother's house, but it seemed like another world. It was springtime, just before my 13th birthday. My room was in a long house, known as the L's bed, housing for the poor. As I opened the door, this is what I saw. Mm -hmm. um, my own room. The bathroom door was on the left. The closet door was on the right. I floated around my room all afternoon. The one room apartment for me was, the one room apartment was for me to study in, but studying was far from my mind. This was going to be my art studio. I was still floating with joy when I went out that evening. I bought a newspaper that made me feel very grown up. I felt comfortable walking Walking the bright, busy streets of Tokyo, I was free in a safe city. I thanked Mother in my heart. She was supporting all of us, me, my sister, and grandmother. There were so many restaurants to choose from for my first dinner out. I could order whatever I wanted to eat. This is, this is what it is like to be an adult. I thought. I wished I was. I finished with. I wished I was finished with schooling. I couldn't wait to grow up. Here, I piece together the story I read in the paper 
and what the boy himself told me after we became friends. In high school in Okasha, a boy named Tadokia drew pictures and did not study at all. His father was not pleased. No more comic books, no more drawing, he yelled at his son. Late that night, Tadoka, Tadokia said goodbye to his home at his school, to his school and to the city of Okoshaka. He walked a night he walked at night and slept during the day, eating whatever he could find in the fields. He reached Tokyo in sixteen days and went straight to the newspaper company and made an announcement. My name is Chirokia and I want to be a cartoonist. How old are you? someone asked. Fifteen. Where did you come from? Ashoka Ashoka. I walked from there. That's about three hundred and fifty miles. This is interesting, said the editor in chief.